Hi Simon, currently I'm upgrading my bag just to now revise more the bottom end of it. Okay, so I got the tailor made in two. guys how are you all doing it's Easter Sunday early in the morning I wasn't gonna make a video today but I did say on yesterday's video if it got 500 plus likes overnight that I'd come and make a video nice and early both of the girls are still asleep um, and the reception that these what's in your bag videos or the secondhand stuff is going down incredibly well and it's obviously giving me something to do in terms of content whilst we're in lockdown so I'm very grateful for this series and also a big thank you to Matthew MJS Golf is the gentleman that actually suggested these what's in your bag videos so we're actually going to be starting this video off with his bag and I can't thank you enough Matthew for this series I think everyone really likes it and appreciates it as well as having a look at the ups and downs of people's bags my advice in terms of changing them and then how you can kind of fix those problems with secondhand equipment on eBay or wherever else you might find them so guys I hope everyone has a great Easter Sunday and weekend at home as the majority of us will be if you wouldn't mind leaving this video a like as well that'd be fantastic subscribing if you are new and let's get straight into it. Okay, let's move on to Matthew's bag. R11S at the top of the bag here. Um, uh, he says he can get 300 out of it when he swings out of his boots. Uh, Matthew plays off 10, uh, plays at a windy golf course. Um, uh, but the R11S, there were better drivers that TaylorMade have made. That is just a long ball machine, but not that forgiving. So um, your bad shots are going to be quite bad. He does say he can struggle with a weak shot out to um, uh, the right-hand side. So potentially a more forgiving driver, potentially something a bit more offset would help with that. I haven't seen your swing, so I can't really... Um, Give you sound advice on what driver to go for but i'd keep it reg flex i'd keep it quite high lofted um, and potentially a bit more offset there's a load of drivers you've seen my videos matthew there's loads of drivers out there to have a look or go and get fitted if that is potentially something you want to have a look for in the future however this r7 draw caught my eye absolute bargain for you guys about 20 pounds if that 25 at max Great year for TaylorMade, the R7 series, um, in terms of driver. Again, long ball machine, um, but the woods were fantastic. So I highly recommend having a look at R7 woods if you haven't got wood in the bag at the moment. M1 hybrids. Now, you that windy golf course, so I like these hybrids because they're quite small. They're more built for precision more than anything else because that um, uh, like front to back of the head of the hybrids actually quite shallow. Very similar to the gaffer range that TaylorMade brought out this year. Because they're more built for that um, precision shot, that's probably why the gaffer range didn't do so well. They were so niche. However, for Matthew's golf course and his handicap, I think they're a great addition. I love the look of the M1s as well, and you can probably pick them up for a really good price um, with that being said. Um, so I think the M1's a great addition. If you did want a more forgiving um, uh, hybrid, never get one with a changeable weight. If any club in general, by the way, if they've got a sliding weight in the back of them or the front of them or the side of them, they're not going to be that forgiving because manufacturers have to take away the um, weighting in the head just to put that weight there. Whereas the majority of golfers just need the weight at the very back of the driver or the wood or whatever it is to gain height. So they're more controlling, but for a position player um, or position play that obviously Matthew's after a windy golf course, I like the hybrids. Don't know what about SLDR guys, but they just look immaculate. You guys keep sending me bags with SLDR um, irons and whatever chrome Taylor made to put on them, they just look fantastic. So he's played about 150 times with them. They look pretty much brand new. You're obviously looking after them well, Matthew, as well. Um, uh, but again, forgiving um, uh, uh, irons if you're looking for something that's shiny um, and get, get, get a decent um, price on them as well. X-Series wedges at the bottom end. Good gapping, 52 and 56 from that sand wedge. And the Nike putter. Now he said, what do you think? Um, he knows it's ugly. It's not everyone's cup of tea. However, does that matter? No. He loves it. It does the job for him. He's changed to a claw grip this year to obviously um, stop wrist action. And it's higher MOI. It's high forgiving. If it works, keep it in the bag. Please do not change it. Um, uh, the only reason that people change their putters, I do feel, is because they lose confidence with it. However, if you're practicing with it um, and you love that feel and weight, then it's as good as any putter out there, I would say. Um, uh, so, Matthew, I love it. Good thing that also Matthew pointed out was his golf balls. AD33 Tours, he highly rates them. They're £20 a dozen or whatever they are. And to be honest, they're going to be a good ball um, for the 80% of you guys that are watching this video. You must remember, um, the more expensive the ball, the lower spinning it is. 
So that's why the pros want it, because they don't want their drivers to balloon. Um, uh, and at the same time, they've got enough club head speed at the low end of the bag, i.e. wedges, to get anything to stop. They could get a pebble to stop on the green, because they're going to spin any ball at 10,000 plus. However, for the majority of golfers that don't swing it at 80 miles an hour with their wedge, um, uh, they need a slightly softer compression ball like these AD33 Tours or like a soft feel, whatever. So don't go and buy expensive golf balls just because you think you want the best for your game. If anything, the cheaper balls are probably better for you. But he highly, highly recommends these. I haven't played with the AD33 Tours, um, but they're going to be very similar to a lot of lower compression balls. They're probably more on the harder side, but he's a 10 handicapper and he does hit his driver about 250. So that probably makes sense. But Matthew, thank you for the series idea. Um, um, uh, in terms of wood, I'd highly go and recommend something a bit more offset, but a bit more forgiving. Um, uh, maybe less, um, uh, maybe less deep face as your driver has at the moment. Something a bit wider, like the ping stuff that I've already shown about a million times in all these videos. Guys, let's get into the next one. Now this is why I like making these videos. This is a great bag and the deals that this man has got is brilliant. Now the email is just headed with Wildensteins. So I think that's your surname, but um, sir, you've got an impressive bag. Now this gentleman um, plays off 28. Um, he's been playing since October last year um, and he's asking advice about his irons. Now let's just quickly have a look at his bag. Now. In terms of averages, he's in driver 270, 290 when he hits it straight. So the boy's got some speed for very little playing. Um, uh, and let's have a look at his bag because his bag is impressive. Now, he said... Okay, so I got the TaylorMade M2. He said that he's got the 2016 M2, which by the way is my favourite ever driver, and wood for $150, which is a stupidly good deal like if you're lucky to get the driver for 150 dollars that's how good the driver was when it first came out let's have a quick listen um uh, to um Five. him uh, explain basic shaft 60 degree stiff flex the turn made into three wood 16 16.5 high launch again stiff flex 65. Now, also, I should mention he's left-handed. A lot of you mentioned to me, Simon, so, mean, there's no deals for left-handed people. Now, the reason I feel that this gentleman's got a great deal on the M2 and the three wood is because selling left-handed gear is just as difficult because there's not many of you left-handers out there. So all I would say to someone that's looking for a left-handed deal, if you're looking for a specific club, you're going to struggle. However, if you keep your mind quite broad, there are tons of deals out there. That's a great deal and bargain. I wouldn't change those clubs for a very long time. They're perfectly suited for you um, for the moment and going forward. Obviously, you've only been playing a short while um, and they're gonna steer you in a great direction. So, big fan of that, mate. I've got the basic strata set. Again, I've only been playing since October. Now, impressive looking bag now obviously the starter set or the strat set from callaway um isn't going to be the best feeling or best sounding clubs in the bag or anything that you've ever tried before however this is what i would say the gentleman's obviously got a swing on him and um, he's got great wedges i think he paid how much did he pay for he paid 60 dollars for all three um uh, of those wedges at the bottom end. Now it was from a friend, so obviously his friend's doing him a deal, but again, that's just a stupid bargain for the fact of $150 for the woods and the uh, wedges at the bottom end of the bag. You're not gonna need to change those for a very long time. Now, you wanted or possibly to upgrade to the JPX 919 hot metals. Is this a good idea? Now, for your game at the moment, I would say they are good clubs, but you're gonna get better very quickly. I wouldn't invest in clubs at all at the moment. I would play this year out with the clubs that you've got. You're gonna learn more about your swing, you're gonna get an idea of what you like the feel of, and to be honest, the clubs that you've got at the moment aren't the result of you not coming down in terms of handicap, and by the end of the year, you yourself are gonna be able to make a judgment whether the JPX 919 hot metals when you try them are worth it or not. I would say they're too chunky for you, and by the fact that you're already hitting them like your 7 iron 155 already, um, uh, they're gonna be too 
out of control. They're gonna to be too high launching, um, and to be honest, I think you'd need a smaller head, so like a Titleist um, AP2, for example, um, a potentially a more forged head. But that's why I'd say play out the rest of this year um, and then have an idea, or you'll have an idea of what you want in the bag. But overall, I think it's a very impressive bag. Enjoy the rest of the year when you do finally get out. Um, and then hopefully you find some great bargains as well um, uh, when it comes to sorting out your irons. Okay, the last one is from Michael, and I think this probably relates to a lot of you guys that are just starting the game with similar problems and questions on um, uh, where my bag is, am I doing anything wrong, etc, etc. So he's been playing golf for about a year, he plays off 15 currently, he was off 22, but he feels he should be off 12, 13. Now, he has a bit of a slice um, with the driver or the upper end of the bag and he really um, uh, falls back on his utility iron. It's kind of his go-to to find the middle of the fairway. Here's his driver about 220 and um, the three wood about 210. Some days he can't hit it, but other days it goes straighter and further than his driver. Now, typically this is because the three wood's got more backspin. That's swamping a lot of the side spin that you put on your shots um, and it's giving you probably um, better launch numbers than your driver would because it's got that added loft. So first thing I would do is loft up your driver anyway from its standard setting. Um, I would probably loft it up as high as it can possibly go just to help with your slice tiny bit because it's gonna close the club face as well. Um, that's my first thing I'd do. You've got great clubs by the way, Michael. Let's have a quick look. He does a bit of commentary, which is great. As I'm currently um, upgrading my bag, I've just uh, replaced more of the bottom end of it. Um, just got the F9 driver, three woods. Um, it's in a stiff flex. It's 9 degrees, but I've got lofted up one. Oh, okay, okay, cool. So you've already done that. Okay, so he's got 9 degrees, lofted up 10.5, and he's got a stiff shaft in there. Now, what I would say, um, what he has told me, which is very important, I'll ask this about a lot of my lessons, is that um, uh, I ask, have they played sports before? Um, uh, what do they do for a job? Because that will tell me a lot about someone's swing and build. Michael's played a lot of rugby, which means that he's gonna be a pretty strong bloke. And the problem with being a strong bloke and starting the game of golf is that you rely on your arms and you rely on your shoulders and you rely on your back because it's quick, easy, accessible power. So Michael, I haven't seen your swing. You've had a couple of lessons. Um, you've worked on strengthening your grip to counteract that slice, which is somewhat in the right realm. However, your problem isn't the clubs. Your problem is because you're so strong and built, you're relying on just your arms to hit the golf ball, which is good and bad. Good news is you can hit the ball 220 yards just with no rotation on in your body whatsoever. I haven't seen your swing, but I'm 90% sure this is gonna be the issue. As soon as you sort your swing path out, you allow your body to rotate a tiny bit more um, and get that club working more into out or neutral, your driver's gonna go 280 yards plus easily. You're gonna not slice as much with all your woods um, and you won't have to rely on that three iron. Overall, your bag looks great. Um, I love the look of the Forge Tech irons. You obviously love a bit of Cobra. There's nothing yeah, wrong with that. I think Cobra's had a fantastic couple of years. Um, in terms of the lower end of your bag, good enough at the moment, do you know what I mean? And I don't say good enough, I would get something with slightly less bounce, because obviously, um, uh, or have something a bit more um, like a Vokey in there, probably at the lower end, maybe um, uh, like a 56 degree, depending on those more versatile shots out the rough, a bit more control, but you'll learn that as your handicap comes down, you're already a good handicap anyway, you obviously hit it far, but it's getting rid of those bad shots, that's your problem. I wouldn't worry about the low end of the bag, I think that's all great. I love yeah. the Fang Putter, I think that's fantastic as well. Um, uh, but all I would say is once yours is just a technical issue, as soon as you sort out your swing path, everything's going to be going straighter, everything's going to be going a lot further. Um, and then to get down to single figures, you just have to grind away at your wedge play, to be honest. You've got more than enough weapons at the bottom end at the moment. As I say, you could potentially add another wedge in there, something with not as much bounce and can get a tiny bit more nip and control, like a 54, 56 degree wedge. Um, uh, but apart from that, I think you've got all bases covered. I hope you enjoy the game when you finally allow back out, mate. Um, uh, and thank you for sending the video in. So guys, there you have it. Thank you for everyone that's sending your videos in for the What's In Your Bag series. I am getting through them. Some of the emails haven't uploaded the videos properly. I will reply to everyone's email if it's not in the videos um, and help you with all your questions. I think that's gonna be tomorrow's job. That's gonna be a sit down at the office at eight in the morning job, I think that is. Um, and then all the other videos I can obviously get, use or have great questions or ideas and I think would relate to a lot of you. I will be doing another video on this. Um, uh, guys, thank you ever so much for watching this video. Have a great rest of your Easter Sunday. See you later.